God's blessings to you on today. This is Pastor Hagwood, pastor of First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we are exalting Christ to restore, renew, and rebuild people to serve uh, uh, to serve the kingdom of God. God's blessings to you on today. Uh, again, this is our virtual worship space. Forgive me for the lighting. Uh, it's just in the place where I am. It's a little, um, a little bit iffy, if you will. I'm trying to kind of maneuver through some things to try to make it a little bit brighter uh, and so forth on the course of the day. But God, we thank God for you on the midst of today. So our first Zion family, we thank you. Um, uh, pastor's been needing a lot of prayers here lately. Um, just bereavement and things of that nature. Um, I will turn the conference call line on shortly. Uh, we'll do so probably in the midst of our song that we have queued up. A few things I want to go over today in the midst of our virtual worship for the hour or so that we have and also the word of God, which will be preached here shortly. But in the midst of all this, I thank God for all of you because even on a Sunday morning, we must realize that it's not about the building that we call the church. It's about us being the efficacy of the church uh, people, individuals, and so forth. This is why it's so important that we gather together, even in the space, even during this pandemic, that God is already beginning to erase various things. The vaccine is being uh, pushed out and folks are getting their shots. I'm not uh, eligible to get mine just yet, but when I am, I will be getting it uh, and so forth. And I pray that you will be as well. We're moving closer to being able to get back into that space, uh, a community of worship, uh, eventually. So just continue to be faithful, continue to be mindful of what God is doing, and allow God to continue to give us what we need in the midst of where we are. I'm so glad that you are here with us on today. Again, we will have a, um, a worship time, a few announcements that I wanted to give also to our First Mount Zion family. Also, the aspect of our giving, make sure that we're giving according to what God has given us by way of tithes and offerings. We have various mediums in order to do that, and we pray that everyone will participate. Uh, if you love the Lord, love your church, then you need to give to your church. Amen. So this is why we need to make sure that we do so in the midst of our worship time together. So with that being said, uh, I want to have a word of prayer because we can't go any further unless we ask for the Holy Spirit to come into this, pla this place and into the space in order that we can have an experience with God in spirit and in truth. Let us pray at this time. Most eternal and all wise God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this space of virtual worship that we have right now. We ask, Father, that you give us what we need uh, in the midst of where we are, and God, allow us to see your glory in every aspect, God, um, as we continue to push and be motivated by what it is that you have called us to do. We ask right now, Lord, that you bless uh, those that are coming on board to listen, those that are listening right now under the sound of my voice, bless us in this worship moment. And Lord, we'll be careful to give your name, praise, honor, and glory that is due. Bless us now and keep us in every way, shape, fashion, and form. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I have music queued up, um, and I'll be back shortly. Amen. Um, with some announcements and a few other things, and then we will get into our word for today and also uh, before that our black history moment because it is black history month i want to get into that as well on today god's blessings to you amen
Amen. We thank God on today, amen, that truly that we can give ourselves away to God in order that God can use us for his work and for his way. We thank God today for all of you, again, for our virtual worship space on today. Uh, before I go any further, I want to let you know that the conference call line is open, 978-990-5000. Uh, you can actually reach us there. Um, uh, just make sure you meet your line. Uh, for those who do not have the internet access, once um, it's open now, if you wish to, to uh, join it uh, and actually come up, um, come on board uh, and listening, if you don't have, again, internet access, to be able to look at us on Facebook Live. Again, we thank God for all of you. I've been dealing with, um, actually, uh, had I eulogized my uh, my grandfather on yesterday. Uh, great service, uh, it was an outdoor service um, uh, by the great side. Our, uh, it was a host of our family that was there, um, and, um, and and we just thank God for uh, having that uh, that hour or so to be able to just celebrate his life and uh, to be able to uh, just have that gathering. Uh, it, was, it was awesome time. It was good to see family members I hadn't seen in quite some time and uh, to reconnect with them as well. So with that being said, again, uh, please be in prayer. Um, I do have some sick and shut in I want to talk about um, as well before I go there. Please be in prayer for the Washington family and um, the little family with regards to uh, the death um, of our dear brother um, Clifton Washington. Uh, his funeral services will be on tomorrow, um, um, February 8th, at Alexander Funeral Home. The visitation will be from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m., and the funeral services will begin at 1 p.m. So please make a note of that on today. Uh, please keep Minister Lena, um, again, the Littles, um, uh, Brother William Little, Sister Mary Little, uh, the Washington family, um, um, Minister Lena and Brother Clifton's son, uh, please keep all of them in your prayers during this uh, difficult time and season, again, of bereavement. Um, during the month of February, we will be going through the process of having various readings and so forth for our Black History uh, Month. Um, I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently come next week. Uh, I'm going to try to do this uh, via some level of, of Zoom through Facebook, if at all possible. If not, um, we'll just continue to do it the same way we're doing it. Uh, but um, um, I've gotten things together and done an awesome job as they normally do in getting our, our Black History moments together. And uh, we will be talking about the themes and so forth. And I'll be getting to that in just a second. Uh, just what that I want to get through some of these announcements first uh, in regards to uh, First Mount Zion. But we will be doing this during the course of February. Uh, so be attentive with your ears. You may learn something. Uh, pastor may learn something uh, in regards to uh, the the, um, uh, the pieces and parts and people that uh, they're going to bring uh, toward us. Today I'll be doing it, but they're providing me that information. So um, just want to let you know and be uh, appreciative of what Sister Barry and Sister Justine Wilson uh, are doing in regards to our Black History Month as we move forward. Uh, please keep in mind our sick and shut-in um, that we have um, at, at First Mount Zion, Ms. Fanny Smith at Willow Ridge on Milton Road, um, Sister Janice uh, Ware, she's at home, Deacon Penny Hughes, who's at home, uh, Sister Margaret Wilkes, who's at home, Deacon Frank Howard, who's also at home, uh, Sister Frances Summers, uh, Bonnie Summers, uh, she's at home, Sister Ruth Hemphill, who's also at home, Mr. Preston Jenkins, uh, who is at home as well, uh, and just keep them all in our prayers. That's the sick and shut in list that I do have. Uh, if you need to um, contact the church with regards to anyone that you know who may be sick and shut in, please let us know. Call the church um, at 704-332-8335. And we'll make sure through our church secretary we get them on the list and, and make note of that for the next Sunday so that we can announce it during our virtual worship space. So, ma'am and sir, please uh, be able um, 
just call the number and call our church and let us know if there are any sick and shut in amongst our membership at First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Also, um, I want to go through the process again of, uh, of, of just thanking everyone for what you continue to do from the perspective of, of course, your giving. Um, it is important during this pandemic season uh, that we're in that we're giving uh, regularly and cheerfully and continuously to the ministry of First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Um, again, uh, we, we have things that we have to do in ministry. Uh, of course, um, things don't pay for themselves, of course, and, um, and just even even though we're not in the building and utilizing the building to its fullest extent, um, again, there are things that we have to make sure that we do in order to keep the house up. So with that being said, make sure that you're giving. If you have questions about uh, giving or how you can give, I'll give you those ways again. Uh, you can give by way of you can mail your contributions to the church directly. You can mail them by U.S. mail. Uh, to 1515 Remount Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28208. You can actually stop by the church um, 1 p.m. Um, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. On Saturdays, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., you can stop by the church and actually give your tithes and offerings at the church. There will be someone there to be able to collect tithes and offerings. During the course of the week, Monday through Friday, from, from approximately 1030 a.m. to about 2.30 p.m., you can come by the church and actually give your tithes and offerings. Um, we have a drop box on the side door. Okay, the side door, we're going to the, uh, the church office. If you go to the side door, you'll see a mail drop. You can actually put your tithes and offerings there. Uh, it will be secured, and we will make sure that it gets the appropriate resources in order to make sure that you um, get credit, of course, for your giving, but you can drop it off if that door is locked. Uh, but from 10.30 to 2.30, the secretary is there, and you can actually come to the church and give your tithes and offerings there. Also, uh, by way of Giveify, okay, by way of Giveify, the Giveify app, you can go to find First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, be able to hit um, First Mount Zion and give accordingly based off your credit card or debit card information. Also, you can give by way of, um, give by way of PayPal, through our website at first, that's F I R S T M T Z I O N dot com. Through our website, you can go to our website, you can give via our website. Uh, just as soon as you get to the homepage, look in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a donate button. Hit that donate button, and that will kick off the PayPal application. And you can actually give by way of your credit card or, or debit card information through PayPal. So those are two electronic forms that we have in order that you can give uh, give to the church. And then, um, again, um, all the other ways that I had went through the process of stating as well. Also, I've got the other one. You can call the church. Call the church, 704. Um, uh, 704. Now I forgot the number. <laughs> Forgive me. 704-332-8335. Um, and you can call the church, and if you need someone to come by your home in the Charlotte metro area to come and pick up your tithes and offerings, we'll be glad to do so. We'll, we'll send someone by um, uh, and come by and pick up your tithes and offerings if you can't get to the church physically. We'll come to you and actually pick your tithes and offerings up if you wish to give, and we'll make sure to do that. Again, um, God's blessings to everyone. Um, there's so much that's going on. Uh, in our church, even when we're not there. And remember, the church is not the building. The church is us. And because we're the church, God continues to give us, again, cohesiveness in community. And we need to make sure that we do everything necessary in order to continue to build up the name of Jesus Christ and exalt him by way of our mission and our vision of exalting Christ to restore, renew, and rebuild people to serve the kingdom of God. Something I forgot uh, we still having COVID-19 testing Monday through Friday at the church from 9 a.m. to, I think, um, I think 3 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. Um, if someone wants to correct me on that, please do in the comments. Um, I just want to make sure that we uh, do so. But, um, oh, wow. Um, I'll get to that in a second here in the comments. Um, but, but with regards to our COVID-19 testing, please know that um, 
that is going on and that you can have it. Um, you can get tested for COVID-19 for free. No, no, there's no payment involved, but this is a service that we're offering at First Mount Zion uh, through Ander Labs, through a partnership with Ander Labs that they are on our campus um, during that time. Again, thank you, Sister Ware. It's from 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, uh, the COVID-19 testing is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. each and every uh, day, Monday through Friday, okay? And you can come by and actually be tested for COVID-19. Um, uh, we we'll probably will be in talks with Ander Labs soon because given the vaccine, um, in the vaccine rollout, there is a possibility, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but there is a possibility they may attempt to use, ask us, ask First Mount Zion to be a site for COVID-19 vaccination. Now, we don't know that yet, but we got to see if, they, if they're going to go that route. But we know for testing, um, for testing, of course, they are using us and we have a partnership with them um, right now for really the next, um, next two months, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that they'll continue to be able to do so and be able to test uh, for COVID-19. That's not only for our congregation, that's for anyone um, because we don't have many sites on the West Corridor uh, around West Boulevard, uh, Remount Road, Wilkinson Boulevard. We don't have many sites. So Fur Mount Zion is a site for free COVID-19 testing. So let your friends, let your family know that we're doing this at our church and that they wish to be tested for COVID-19, they can come by. Uh, they don't have to go all the way to Freedom Drive. Uh, I know Freedom Drive is one of the bigger locations, but uh, there is another place on the west side, and we're that we're that place. Um, I think there's a few other places that are testing. So please, man, please, sir, be mindful of that, and uh, let your friends, your family, co-workers know that we're doing that because it's part of the service and ministry and love of Jesus Christ that we do this in our community. Again, for everyone in our virtual worship space, we thank God for you. Um, Thank God for what he's doing in the midst of where we are. I just got a, got a note here a minute ago. Please be in prayer for the Floyd family, uh, for um, uh, Brother Kenny Floyd and, and Tammy Floyd. Um, their nephew, unfortunately, was, I don't know the details yet, he was actually he was actually uh, killed last night. Um, I just want you all to be in prayer for them. I don't have any more details um, and definitely don't really want details placed on Facebook. Uh, I'll to find that out through our, our church and through the church secretary and find out what um, just kind of, um, you know, the occurrence and so forth. But just be in prayer. Uh, know that that happened. Um, it's a cruel world. And um, and this is what we have to minister to in the church on a regular basis. So please be in prayer for the Floyds, uh, Brother Kenny and Sister Tammy Floyd, again, in the death of their nephew, uh, unfortunately, who, uh, who was killed last night. Um, uh, so, so with that, just be in prayer uh, for them in the midst of where uh, where they are currently. Um, again, we thank God for all the, the, the things that are occurring, uh, all the things that have happened. Uh, thank God for all of you, for the cards that uh, I received uh, from members, the death of my grandfather, and, uh, and so forth. Um, again, we just thank God for you. And I also almost forgot, this is Communion Sunday. We are going to have communion today, okay? I and mean, I've got everything set up here. Uh, I think Deacon Clark, um, he, he texted me last night about it. He said, don't forget, it's Communion Sunday. And um, make sure we had our elements out. So you make sure you get your elements. At the end of our worship, we'll go through and have our virtual communion on today. Again, First Mount Zion, we love you in the Lord. To thank God for you in every extreme, in every way, um, and so forth. Um, your pastor was dealing with a lot last week. I was in residency last week uh, for my classes, for my doctoral program. And um, sometimes I think they try to, I think sometimes they try to crucify us to resurrect us. <laughs> That's the way I look at it sometimes uh, with regards to all the schoolwork that we have to do. But residency was well. Um, had a lecture I went through uh, virtually. All this was virtual. And uh, just thank God for what he did um, in the course of that week. Uh, not only the lectures, but also for uh, what he exposed uh, in regards to some, some heavyweight theologians um, um, with uh, the Reverend Dr. John Kenny, uh, Dr. Uh, Renita Weems, and Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, James Forbes Jr., um, actually had the opportunity to listen to, um, to be in on a, in a lecture um, they did and uh, just some good insight 
uh, fuel for the fire for any pastor. And uh, it was just an awesome experience. And, and this is part of the educational opportunities that I get with my doctoral program at Palmer Theological Seminary. So we thank God for all that he continues to do. And we're growing. Uh, we're still growing in the midst of all the pieces and parts of what God is doing. With this being said, uh, we, I want to enter into this space, into our Black History Moment time. Amen. And I got something uh, that I want to read for you all. Uh, again, um, Sister April Berry, Sister Justine Wilson are responsible for uh, these pieces and parts. And our Black History theme for 2021 is the first African-American millionaires. Wow, this is awesome. First African-American millionaires. And so I want to read our first excerpt for, for um, this first Sunday of Black History Month. Uh, the theme is, and the theme description is this, between 1830 and 1927, as the last generation of blacks born into slavery was reaching maturity, a small group of industrious, tenacious, and daring men and women broke new ground to attain the highest levels of financial success. Each Sunday, little-known stories of pioneering African-American entrepreneurs will be told in honor of their worthy contribution to black history, to business history, and to American history. And with this on today, we want to talk about William Alexander uh, Lettersdorf, I think, uh, or Lettersdorf. That is, his, that is his name, William Alexander Lettersdorf. Um, the Jewish, Danish, black, Irish. Mixed man often passed for white uh, and lived in New Orleans until his white fiance was killed by her father for loving a black man. Uh, uh, Liedersdorf relocated to San Francisco and opened a, an important uh, import and export business. Once this business turned a profit, he opened a general store, a warehouse, a lumber yard, a shipping business, and then San Francisco's first hotel. He also built a mansion, and it was used as the U.S. Embassy in Mexican um, California territories. When the American and, American and Mexican War ended, he built California's first public school. His property and assets were valued over $1 million, granting him the title of the first African-American millionaire. Soon, Liedersdorf died of brain fever and his mother was uh, was conned by a real estate investor named Joseph uh, Forsum to sign over his fortune. Um, with the stroke of a pen, the legacy of the first African-American uh, first African-American millionaire was stolen. So this is our Black History um, thing um, uh, moment of William Alexander Liedersdorf, again, the first African-American millionaire in the United States. Amen. Again, thank you, Sister Barry and Sister Justine Wilson, Sister April Barry and Sister Justine Wilson for this contribution on today for our Black History Month. Amen. So with this being said, I want to put another song actually up and I want you all to make sure that you're giving to the Lord accordingly uh, during this time. And I want to give you space in order to do so. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do so uh, during this time and make sure that I'm giving appropriately to the Lord as the Lord sees fit. Amen. So I want to have a word of prayer as we give our gifts to the Lord of tithes and offerings. Amen. Via whatever form you wish to give them in. But please be in pray prayer for our church. Continue to be in prayer, amen, uh, and pray diligently of how God wishes you to give and to contribute to the kingdom of God via First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Let us pray at this time. Father God, we pray right now, Lord, that you bless these gifts that will be received for the building up of the kingdom of God. We ask, Lord, that you continue to be, allow us to be motivated by everything that goes on uh, in regards to ministry at First Mount Zion. We thank you, Lord, for what you have already done, even in the midst of the pandemic. But Lord, we thank you even further for what you're going to do, because God, you are truly, you've truly been faithful, and you continue 
to be faithful to us, O oh God, uh, in every way, shape, fashion, and form. Bless us and keep us in every way and allow us, God, to continue to pursue your glory, uh, to pursue closer and deeper relationship with you, O oh God, as we continue to sojourn in this life. Bless us now and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When I come back, I'm just going to cue some things up, try to get um, all of my pieces and parts together here. Uh, my songs went off, and I got to make sure all these things come back. But after that, I'll come back with our scripture, and then we'll come back with the preach word of God. Amen. Hey, Google, play back gospel instrumental worship. Okay, check out this black gospel instrumental station on YouTube Music. When you hear the call, hey Google, turn volume to zero. Hey Google, turn volume to eight.
Amen. We thank God on today, amen, just for how God has blessed us and has given and has given us so much in the midst of where we are. With that being said, there is a word from the Lord on today. Amen. And we thank God just for being able to have the word of God. Amen. I'm all, my trusty NIV that I oftentimes pull out. Um, it's got rough marks, scuff marks, and so forth. But what's contained within is still relevant and it is still good gospel word for our being even on today. Amen. And I want to read today from um, the book of Deuteronomy. It's a passage of scripture that I've read uh, numerous times before, first Mount Zion, but um, uh, God gave me something in regard to this word. Uh, it's a little bit different, okay, uh, on today. And I think that hopefully we can use it for our good as we move forward and sojourn in this life. Deuteronomy chapter number six. Deuteronomy chapter six. Um, verses 1 through 12. And I'm reading from the NIV version of God's word, and this is what it says. It says, These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, so that you your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God. As long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey. Just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And for the time that we have on today, um, on this morning, I would like to preach from this title. Remember, then remember what's needed. Remember, then remember what's needed. Remember then remember what's needed. One of the things that I gather from all of life, at least the amount of life that God has given me to live, is that truly, First Mount Zion, hindsight is 2020. I'm not talking about the year 2020 because no one really wants to remember that. But what I mean is, is that as you live your life in progression, what you end up finding is that you end up walking further into existence and really closer to eternity as you go through life. But oftentimes it's the matter of looking back where you have the most clearest picture and picture of sight and vision of what God was doing back then. And I want to help someone on this morning because I think when we really realize our experience with God and how God has given us this level of backtrack, if you will, that we can look back on our lives and 
look back at the good and the bad and the ugly. We can look at every experience and circumstance. We can look at what God has blessed us with, what God allowed us not to walk into, and also what God maybe has promised for us in the future. But it's every time we take a step back, when we look back and turn our head to see what God has done and how God has been so good and what we've learned and matured in, we begin to realize that God has been with us all the time. That's why when we come to the existence of where we stand is that we start to realize that we're thankful and we're grateful and we're blessed to the extent of what God has ushered and extended towards us because if it had not been, if the, like the old church would say, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, or more importantly, if it had not been for us being on the Lord's side, then where? would we be? I wonder sometimes, church, First Mount Zion, that even as we travel through the world, can we come to some level of existence to remember what happened back behind the door? What happened that wasn't so great in the eyesight of God, but still God allowed us to turn around and see how good he's been to us and to show us a little bit about ourselves because of what we've experienced when we look back and we saw our vision was clear even when our vision wasn't clear when we were, we were in the midst of whatever we were doing once we got past it God allowed his grace to allow our countenance in our heads to turn back and to see in clearer vision what it was that he was doing. Can I help someone on this morning? Can you remember where we were five years ago? Uh, I had to reflect, even during the course of this bereavement I've been dealing with, I've had to reflect on my time at First Mount Zion. How from the time 2016 and 15, that from that point forward, how much God has blessed us in four to five years. How God has allowed, even in the presence of some corrupt leadership within our country, how God has still allowed us to thrive. Not just survive, but to thrive. Golf tournaments, to raise funds for the church, to support children. Please remember these things. Remember how for every barbecue in the fall that we had and every Christmas program that was orchestrated, every black history moment that had ever been said or taught for every aspect of service that we've rendered in the church, whether it be COVID-19 to every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. of giving food out of our food ministry. God has done something in our lives and we need not to forget it. We need not to forget what God has allowed us to experience. And we need to go through the process of remembering what God has done in the midst of where we are today. And so with that said, church, whether these experiences, again, uh, don't just discount them because these moments of reflection, will we need to cherish both good, bad, and indifferent and cherish them 10,000 lifetimes over because they were significant. They meant something. They were wholeheartedly important, and we will always remember them. And I pray we will always remember because within each one of those moments and continued moments that we will continue to have, I think maybe God is trying to teach us something. 
And I would go as far as to say that some of the things that we remember, again, were not so pleasant. It could have been learned through some imperfection or flaw in our own judgment or in someone else's judgment. But at the same time, we need not judge that because our Bible says in Romans 3 and 23 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So there's no judgment here. We must learn from the good, bad, and ugly and the indifferent experiences as well as the good experiences and ask the Lord in prayer and petition to make our crooked places straight and our rough places smooth and plain. And I pray that in whatever experience that we've had as a church, that the Lord was making our crooked places straight and our rough places plain. I pray that in every conversation, whether good, bad, or indifferent, that God was still making our crooked places straight and our rough places smooth. I pray that the goodness of God that we remember within our church and the countenance within our church was making our crooked places straight and our rough places smooth. And I pray that for every experience, for every moment, for every correction, for every word, for every gift, for every, every aspect of a life, for every remark, for every deed, good deed, or not so good deed, and even every tangible and intangible touch that we have had with each other, that we remember it and remember that the Lord was making our crooked places straight and our rough places smooth. And that's why, church, the aspect and the emphasis and focus it's really not on just the past and remembering it, but it's what is needed in the present and the beyond. That's going to get us closer to a true, closer walk with God and with Jesus Christ. And so that said, there's a desperate need that we have to remember. Because it's in our reflection where we have time to sit down, document and jot, jot down the positive positions and even the juxtapositions that we have faced in order to make us better for the kingdom of God so that men and women that we come in contact with that don't know Jesus Christ will ever forever be coming to Jesus Christ in order to understand the true and better way of who he is. And that's why we continue to remember. We must remember and learn in order to have true success for our lives going forward. For the space that we have in time, I, I want us to reflect on this question as the Spirit of God will allow us to do so. Why is it so important to remember the past so that we know what's needed in the present. Why is it so important to remember the past so that we know what's needed in the present? Well, church, my first point to this question of why it's so important to remember the past so that we know what's needed in the present is because the playback with God will dictate the next plays we will make. Because the playback with God will dictate the next plays that we will make. Everyone knows under the sound of my voice that the Super Bowl is today. And even though no team may not be playing in the game, you already know what both teams have been doing for the past two weeks. Not only have they been practicing, but they have been watching game film on each other, trying to sift out all the strengths and weaknesses of the opposing team so that they can have a better chance at lifting that Lombardi trophy. 
And just like our passage on today, Moses remembered all of those playback moments where God led him to free the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. A playback moment. Where God showed the magnitude of his power through a shepherd's staff that Moses was carrying. Yet another playback moment. Where God issued ten plagues against Egypt. So they that they the Israelites would remember and never forget that they had that they had a God who would fight for them, who fought for them. Again, another playback moment. God led them out of Egypt with gold, silver, and jewels and other reparations that their former captives gave them because Egypt never wanted to deal with Israel's God ever again. Uh, yet another playback moment where God gave them the bread of heaven called manna every morning, Cornish hen quail every evening, and well water from a rock that never ran dry. Yet another playback moment where God created a highway through a Red Sea to get Israel to safety while drowning the Egyptian army in the same sea when he took the highway barriers down a playback moment where God gave them victory over the Amalekites, the Jebusites, the Perizzites, and all these other ites, all these nations and several other nations so that they could get close to the promised land. Yet another playback moment. And if we want to give any level of respect love and appreciation for what God has done in our church at First Mount Zion, even in the midst of a plant pandemic, then we better hit the playback button and remember what God allowed us to witness so that we will have a better Holy Ghost perspective on knowing what's needed to righteously live our lives from this point forward. Again, church, why is it so important to remember the past so that we know what's needed in the present? Because, church, our children need to know that there is a better way. Because our children need to know that there is a better way. Just like Moses, I believe many of us are trying to live our lives in the best way possible in the sight of God so that all of our offspring and legacy would know that Jesus' way is the better way. Moses made it clear to the children of Israel that they needed to love the Lord their God with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. Not only that, but they should teach and pass down the statutes and laws of God down to their children and grandchildren. Because if God had brought them that far, then God would take them from the present to the future and to the next dimensions of his glory as long as they place their trust in him. And the reality is, is that we, church, cannot impress or pass anything of spiritual substance down to our children if we fail or refuse to remember what our historical ancestors have already taught us. Hmm. We have to remember, church, and never forget what God has already done in order to have hindsight 2020 and to profess by way of impartation and testimony, the goodness of God and what he continues to do and what he can do. My third point, and I'm going to close out this message. Why is it so important to remember the past so that we know what's needed in the present? Because church, our ultimate goal is to achieve the prize of milk and honey. And as I close the sermon on today, please know that we all live now in order that we may all live again in eternity. 
And I truly believe that within where we are on today, that God is still measuring us up and giving us what we need. And I believe that our ancestors of the past, that they knew something even while they were living, as they were maturing, that God's plan for all of us is to reward us with milk and honey. When this life has come to its final conclusion. <laughs> so while we are still on this side of heaven, the Lord wants us to remember <laughs> because our remembrance <laughs> will be the motion picture preview <laughs> of the promise that he has in the present <laughs> and in the hereafter. <laughs> what are you talking about, Pastor Hagwood? I'm talking about living out the legacy because we had the audacity, the gall and the gumption to remember that God gave all of us a long life, a life that's worthy to be lived for the glory of God on this earth. So God must be good to remember that God continues to give us life and life more abundantly. So God must be good to remember that God continues to enlarge our spiritual territory as long as our hand is in his hand. So God must be be good just to remember that God just look on this virtual space has given many in our church family the potential to earn college degrees and higher education degrees and trades and things of that nature. So I have to say that God has been good to remember that God has blessed us with good things. Uh, that are both spiritual and material, material in nature. Uh, so I have to confess uh, that God has been good. Uh, remember uh, that God has kept our children, uh, kept our legacy. Uh, and even though we are uh, distant from being in church in the building right now, uh, we are still needed as a church family. Uh, so I have to say, with 100% assurance that God has still been good. And for every preview of milk and honey blessings that God has given to us on this side of life, on this side of the Jordan, know that the real reward, the eternal reward, is the milk and honey that God has prepared for us in glory. But in order to enter it, in order to acquire it, and in order to receive it, we must, I said we must, we must be able to remember. Then remember what's needed. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. We thank God for this word. Let us pray. At this time, most eternal and all wise God, our heavenly Father, heavenly Father, thank you for this word that has gone in faith. Bless it as you have blessed us. Allow it to soak down deep in our spirit to know, to know, Lord, that we must remember the past in order to be efficient and effective in the present. Bless us now and keep us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask for you to get your elements for our uh, virtual communion. At this time, I will give you, amen, a couple of minutes, amen, to do that as I go through the process of preparing for our virtual communion on this morning. Amen.
Amen. The prophet Isaiah says, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. The apostle Paul admonishes us that a man should examine himself before coming to the Lord's table. That he or she should come to the Lord's table unworthily. They should cause damnation, condemnation to their own soul, not discerning the Lord's body. Therefore, we pray a prayer of forgiveness before we come to the Lord's table. Asking the Lord for forgiveness and having our minds and our hearts set, set in proper spiritual order, in order to partake of the unity of Christ's table. So please repeat after me in prayer. Let us bow our heads. O oh God, before whom our hearts are revealed and no secrets are hid. We ask for your forgiving grace and healing mercy. Amen. That which I receive of the Lord, that which I give unto you. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, take and eat, for this is my body that will be broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup and after they had supped, he said, take and drink. For this is the blood of the new covenant. This is the blood which I have shed for you. Drink ye all of it. As often as you eat it of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show forth my death and my suffering until I shall return. Let us pray. Lord, we, we pray a prayer over the elements of your broken body and your shed blood. That Lord, in what happened at Calvary, Calvary, we are reminded of your strength and your power over death, but also your strength and power over sin. And this is why, Lord, we are redeemed and saved when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So, Lord, we pray right now, Lord, over these elements. They will give us revival and reassurance of what, Lord, you have already promised. Bless us and keep us in this mode of life. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The body blood of our Lord. The body of Christ. Let us eat together. The blood of Christ, let us drink together. Amen. The scriptures record... <clears throat> That they sung a hymn in that upper room, came down in the spirit of the Lord, led them into the Garden of Gethsemane, also known as the Mount of Olives. God's blessings to you on today. I ask you to be safe during the Super Bowl Sunday with your families. Uh, we are still in the midst of the pandemic, but God is still faithful. And know that God is still in control. Remember, then remember what's needed in the midst of your life. We thank God for all that, you continue, that he continues to do. Bless us now and keep us. Ask God that he keeps us and gives us what we need on the journey of life. Amen. Please know on next week, we will have our leadership litany. I did not mention that. Our leadership litany on next week. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be mindful of that. We will try to do it. Hopefully, um, in the, get, to get the litany out by the middle of this week to everyone, uh, please be looking on the social media page. I will probably put it out there. Uh, if not, we will do it by email. Just ask the church secretary, um, it, excuse me, and email the church. We'll make sure that we get uh, that litany out to you. Um, again, I will probably post it on 
uh, social media, um, probably via that way, but we'll probably try to do it by email uh, to do it that way. So if you want a copy of it, please email the church and we'll make sure you have a copy of it probably by either Wednesday or Thursday of this week. And God's blessing to see. We love you in the Lord. There's nothing you can do about that because we live in the life and love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's look to be dismissed on today. Father God, we thank you, Lord, and praise you for all that we have seen and heard in the midst of this virtual space today. Bless us now and keep us in every way, shape, fashion, and form. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless unto that day with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, the power, dominion, glory, and honor forever and forever. And the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. God's blessings to you. We love you in the Lord. There's nothing you can do about it. Please be mindful of all the announcements. And please feel free to share this worship experience with anyone on your fa uh, Facebook pages, Twitter, or Instagram. We thank God for all of you. First of all, again, we love you in the Lord. I miss all of y'all. Uh, pray when we get through these uh, vaccines and pandemics that we'll be able to meet together face-to-face -to -face and be able to worship together as a community of faith tied to the one and only Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. God's blessings to you. Take care and be blessed on today. Amen.